Hey guys, welcome. In this video, we're gonna be talking about a balance of payments surplus, which is kind of a weird thing because usually balance of payments balances. And let me also say right here from the top, guys, we focus on a lot more in economics, balance of payments deficits, because those are really problematic and they happen a lot more than balance of payments surpluses. But balance payment surpluses can happen, they do happen, and we need to study them. And when we study them, we're gonna just get a deeper understanding of the things that we really wanna understand, which are things like pegged exchange rates, okay? Also, the idea of just how the exchange market works, all right? The concepts of an over, uh, sorry, an undervalued currency, or even what we mean by currency manipulation, and also how we integrate our knowledge of the exchange market with the balance of payments. That's what we're doing in this video. So pay attention. You're going to get so much out of this video because we're just combining so much information together, okay? So let's get to it. Balance of payment surpluses. In general, the balance of payments is supposed to balance, right? It's supposed to be just a mathematical reality. So what is a balance of payments surplus? Here's the key, guys. I'm going to go over to my balance of payments here. And I do want you to know that there is another account I'm just leaving off that's called the capital account. It's just got a couple oddball sub-accounts in it that aren't really conceptually all that important, okay? But if we wanted to include it, we could add that capital account in here and just kind of pay attention to what I'm about to say, okay? Here it is. What is a balance of payment surplus? It is all of this, if you added up all of these, all the credits and debits associated with all of these accounts, and yes, the capital account, if you wanted to include it, you would get a surplus. But look where my hand is stopping right here, okay? I am not counting this official reserve assets, which is part of the balance of payments. So if you didn't catch that, let me make it very clear again. Even when there's a balance of payment surplus, if you summed up the whole thing, it would balance. But what we mean by a balance of payment surplus is if you sum up the whole thing besides the official reserve assets, we're running a surplus. There's more credits than debits, okay? So that's the first thing. Next, when do you get balance of payment surplus? It's so important to understand this. Not if you let your currency freely float. If your currency is free floating, you're not gonna run balance of payment surpluses. Balance of payment surpluses, just like balance of payments deficits, are associated with pegged exchange rates, okay? And I'm going very generic titles here. I just have foreign currency, domestic currency. This is the market for the domestic currency, but we gotta think the domestic country, okay, has pegged their exchange, their, their their currency, the, the value of their currency to another um, currency out there. Usually it's going to either be the dollar or the euro, which guess what? The dollar and the euro are official reserve assets, okay? Um, it could be a few others, but it's usually the dollar and the euro, so we're just going to go with that, okay? So again, balance of payment surpluses only happen if you have a pegged exchange rate. If you've pegged the value of your currency to some other currency out there, usually the dollar or the euro, okay? You're just saying, hey, I'm gonna maintain a fixed, if you wanna say it that way, exchange rate with one of these other currencies, usually the dollar or the euro. So that's when it happens. Another name or what is happening, you could say, when you have a balance of payment surplus is your currency is undervalued, okay? What does that mean that it's undervalued? It means your peg, okay? What the official exchange rate is, what the currency is actually being exchanged at. That's right, this is the where it's gonna be exchanged. It's gonna be exchanged at this rate, exchange rate pegged is below the exchange rate market, okay? The economic fundamentals that are behind the supply and the demand curve are actually saying your exchange rate should be here, but your peg is below it. So what does that mean, okay? Well, again, this is the official exchange rate. This is the one of record, okay? And at that exchange rate, quantity supplied of domestic currency, okay? So we're gonna do that, quantity supplied of domestic currency. Now I think that's something that's so important when you say quantity supplied of domestic currency is those are debits. That's right, that is the key part, okay? Here's what's going going on here. The quantity supplied of domestic currency represents people that wanna go out, okay? and go to some other financial market or um, um, product market in the rest of the world. So they need the other currency. And what are they doing? They're supplying the domestic currency, okay? Those are debits. They wanna go out to some other financial market or some other product market. Now, at that exchange rate peg, quantity demanded domestic, all right? Well, the quantity demanded of the domestic currency represents 
credit, okay? That is also so important. Again, what we're kind of integrating is our language from the balance of payments, credits and debits, with the exchange market, which is so important to really deeply understand this, okay? So again, the quantity demanded the domestic currency, what's going on there? Well, the people who are demanding it are trying to come in, right? They have the foreign currency, and what are they doing? They're supplying that foreign currency, demanding the domestic currency. They're saying, I want to come in, I need the domestic currency, I want to go to this country's product market or financial market. And, they de and the issue here, guys, is there's more of those. The credit are bigger than the debits, i.e. balance of payments surplus. So to make sure that we are clear, what does this mean? It means that you've got more people wanting to come in, demanding, that's right, demanding the domestic currency than people that want to go out, the ones that are supplying the domestic currency. So what is this country going to do, the domestic country going to do? Well, it all has to do with those official reserve assets right there. What they're going to do is basically print out their own currency, which they can do as much as they want. That's right. They're going to print out their own currency and they're going to take their own currency to the exchange market. They're going to supply it. So this curve, the supply curve, they're going to shift it to the right so that it intersects right there at that dot. They're going to shift it. So they're going to supply their own currency. Notice this is supply of domestic currency. They're going to supply it to who? Those people that want to come in, those people that can't. There's not enough domestic currency here right now, okay? Right now, the supply is less than the demand. So what they're going to do, the central bank of the domestic country is going to just print out their own currency, supply their domestic currency, and hand it to those people so that they can come on in and go to the product market or go to the financial market, okay? To go to those markets in their country. So they're just handing that currency to them. Now, what are they getting in return? They're getting the foreign currency, okay? And what we're going to say is it's going to be the currency that they, you know, it's we're going to say it's going to be those official reserve assets, basically, okay? It's going to be, usually you can think of it as the currency they're pegged to, right? It's the, so if they're pegged to the dollar, they're getting dollars, and dollars are official reserve assets. So what they're going to be doing is supplying their domestic currency, buying up those official reserve assets. That means their official reserve assets, is going to, assets are going to be building up, okay? So their reserves, as we'll hear it sometimes called, those reserves are building up, which means those official reserve assets, they're getting more and more and more of them when they do this. Now, what are the advantages of this? Why do we sometimes call this currency manipulation? Well, some people would say, look, they're holding it down here. They're holding their value um, underneath the market value, right? In a, in a way, they're keeping their currency cheap, right? And here they are just handing people currency to come on in. They're keeping it cheap and just handing them currency to come on in, and that helps their exports. And sometimes we say, hey, that's an unfair trade advantage. So it gets called currency manipulation because that's going to help their exports. It's, and in, in addition, it's going to hurt the amount of imports, okay, because they're keeping their currency cheap. That means that stuff is more expensive to the people in their own country. Now, whether or not they're actually manipulating the currency or not, you know, is often a matter of debate, okay, of argument. Because some people just say, look, they had a peg. Yes, the economic fundamentals made it so the exchange rate market is now above it. And so we've got this shortage of domestic currency. That's right, a shortage of domestic currency. That's what happens when you have a balance of payments surplus. All right, and that's just the reality. It's not that they're manipulating anything. It's just they have an exchange rate. They're holding onto their peg. And okay, fundamentals have changed, but they're holding their peg. It's a promise that they have made that they're gonna maintain that peg. So some people say it's not currency manipulation. Here's the deal. What is the limiting factor of a balance of payment surplus, okay? And not everybody, again, in domestic countries is, is, is happy about it. Remember, it's making imports more expensive. So certain, certainly some people are hurt. It could be businesses that are buying imports from abroad or, abroad or just consumers that want to buy stuff from abroad. They're hurt by this, okay, because their currency is being held, held cheap. But again, those exporting businesses are very happy about this policy. So it's a mixed bag like everything in economics, right? There's winners and losers from this policy. But, okay, what is the limiting factor? What, what is it that they, you know, is going to limit them from from maintaining this peg in the general thing is inflation. And that should come to mind right off the bat, right? If they're printing their own currency and just handing their own currency to those people that want to come in, inflation is the issue. They can only maintain this as long as inflation is not an issue. If inflation becomes an issue, 
they're going to have to revalue their currency. Okay. They're going to have to revalue the currency to say, you know what, we're going to move that peg up. Okay. And when they do that, that means when they revalue it, they're basically letting it appreciate, right? Letting it head up. That's going to reduce their uh, exports. That's going to increase their imports. Okay. So that's going to bring a big drag to AD. It's going to be a drag of spending in the domestic economy, and that would help out on the inflation. Okay. So the big thing is if you're running balance of payment surpluses, the limiting factor is inflation. And that should make all the sense in the world, right? Again, what are you doing to maintain this peg? You are supplying domestic currency to those people that want to come in, right? To your country. If you, you know, what you can do, if that's problematic, all that supply of that domestic currency is creating inflation as they come in and buy things, right? You could just revalue your currency. What does it mean to revalue it? It is to say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna change the peg. I'm gonna move it right here to where that exchange rate market is, basically allowing my currency to appreciate, appreciating currencies, reduce exports, increase imports, put that drag on, on spending, and that should help out the inflationary issues. Again, a lot of stuff we covered, a lot of information we're integrating right here in this balance of payment surpluses video. Hope it made sense to you. Hope to see you in the next video.